Good evening, everybody. Welcome to high school football at its best. It doesn't get better than this in the rain, in the cold. You have to love high school football. I'm Bob Haggerty. This is WGTD Sports. Uh, it, there's a lot of wind. Two of the best teams in the state of Wisconsin. I've been waiting all year for this particular matchup. This is going to be a good one. This is what it is all about. It's WGTD Sports in middle to late October. The rain, the wind. This is football weather. It is. Absolutely. As uh, The national anthem already happened, and we want to thank uh, everybody involved with the production, especially our uh, cameraman. By the way, we will are limited to a single camera tonight but we want to give a huge shout out that's to Keegan Schultz as uh, he, he's out there getting wet to be able to bring this game to you so a huge thank to uh, to Keegan also to our a special thank you to all of our WGTD sponsors that's Sylvan Learning Center of Kenosha Fiction Skateboards of Twin Lakes Frank J. Paris Law Offices Pet Supplies Plus of Kenosha Hot government and the Lydia spot would for mayor campaign all of them combined with the talent of the guy next to me well they they'll bring this game to you well, hopefully less of us and more of the field Bob there we go so here we go get ready and we're going to see West Osha will be kicking it off and they'll be going from uh, kicking from left to right. That is from south to north. And they will have the wind pretty much behind them. That's going to be a big deal, both throwing and kicking in this game. You and I have had an opportunity to see both of these squads play. This is going to be exciting. And the first kick, we're underway here at Badger, Lake Geneva. And through the end zone, so we're going to have a touchback. Lake Geneva, they are, they're just a, a bull of a football team. They run through you. They don't run around you. They have a line that just moves you out of the way and a runner that's going to punish you. They have an army on the field. They do. At all times. So the ball is going to be placed at the 20-yard line as we get ready for the first play under scrimmage. Lake Geneva undefeated, undefeated in conference. And he's going to keep it and nowhere. Quarterback keeper that did not work out. Well, in games like this, you're going to see more on the ground than you are through the air. Well, you have to, but you have to make sure you hold on to the ball as well. So now, one to the near, everybody else in the box, under center. And that's going to keep her. To the 40, the 45, one man to beat. You're going to book this. It's going to be 80 yards. Touchdown. 80-yard run on the second play of the game for number 20, J.P. Doyle, the senior, 6'1", 200-pounder, 200, 200 and he had the afterburner. Watch it. That was the one man that maybe had the somebody. Good blocking. And Doyle to the 10, to the 5, book it like Geneva. So waiting for the kick. The ball's up. 
And that is against the wind, and that's good. So 11-15 left in the first quarter. 7-0 for Lake Geneva. Matt, if you're looking at this, if you are West Osha, you can't panic. No, it's the first drive, and as you said, Lake Geneva. Oh, that is a cannon, by the way. They fire the cannon on the north side of the end zone as our director almost lost it next to us. He thought we went off air at the moment. <laughs> I stopped my speech to, to collect myself yes, here. Sorry. So Lake we'll Geneva. We'll bring you toilet paper next time. No problem. <laughs> it's okay. Lake Geneva, we've seen how explosive they can be on their offense and on their defense. Their secondaries are fast. And we, this is, J.P. Doyle is just one of those offensive weapons that can well, flat out fly. They can. And they can score quickly, and they can score often. What makes them special, though, is that they have a defense that can shut the other side down. That's right. West Osha, great offense. I'm waiting to see how they do against this great defense. And I'm not expecting them to panic. No, I all. do not. They have good coaching. So here we are. From the 20, the 25, the 30. He's going to get to the side and out of bounds. Crossing the 30 to about the 33-yard line. So good field position and a good return. And if it looks like it's a little foggy in our pitcher, it's not. That's the rain, actually. And we're going to wait and see. Referees are lining everybody up. Hurry up offense out of West Osha. The Falcons out of the gun. They're going to run the gun an awful lot. Going to look, and he's hit when he throws the ball and short. Or was it? Oh. No, incomplete as number 11, Bays out of Badger, went for the INT. He had good position anyway, but what caused that ball to go up like a wounded duck was the hit, and that's what you do. You want to mess around with a quarterback, get in his face, hit him a few times. I thought Westosha Central's uh, front looked pretty good, but the Badgers' defense just just blew down that wall and got to the quarterback. Second and 10, out of the gun, hurry up. Passes it. The 40, the 45, the 50, the 55, the 20, the 10. Touchdown! Book it! 67-yard run. Are we in for an offensive explosion? Look at this. He's able to bust through. And then nobody, as that is... Taylor, Landon Taylor, and then he's just got another gear. It looks, if we can get this through the upright, it's going to be a quick 7-7 game. Ball up. And good. 10 minutes, 51 seconds left to play. If you're just joining us, where have you been? <laughs> we had an 80-yard run and a 67-yard run, and guess what? We're tied here in Lake Geneva. And Good evening, everybody. Bob Haggerty along with Matt Schwantz, and I just interrupted you. What are you going to say, Bob? I was going to say, and if you missed that, you've already missed 147 yards of offense. <laughs> and 147 in a minute, nine seconds. And, by the way, if that was Landon Taylor, number 38. Yeah. That's the tank. That's the, yeah. Can you imagine that the tank that has aster burners? Taylor is who we called, uh, we the, nicknamed the tank. The tank. Nobody can stop him. And he rips up the grass when his treads come tearing up through. This is a good one. So we're going to get ready for it's all tied up. As we get ready for West Ocean to kick it back. Could it be the last team with the football? It could be. You know, you have to think defenses are going to settle down here. They both, both teams have outstanding defenses. Or are these offenses just that good? They're that good. 
like I said, the weather can be an issue, but not for these two. As I said, you're keeping it on the ground. Yes, the legs are churning, the grass is getting tore up, and the points are being scored. Yeah, everybody's talking about Landon. He's a beast. We call him the tank. The tank Taylor. He's tailor-made for football. Okay, he is. I will stop. Clinton Clintonos kicks it, and I don't think that's going to, yep, that's going to go through the back of the end zone. So it's going to be a touchback. As the bells ring in the distance, 7-7, seven, seven, 10 51 left first quarter. I wasn't joking when I said if, you've, if you're just joining us, you're only a minute nine into the game, but you're looking and going, oh my goodness, what have I missed? Well, one minute and nine seconds, and we haven't even had the opportunity to talk about the Badgers' Matthew O'Grady, who is that Swiss Army knife of the team. Yeah, he is a piece of everything as an option. Is that behind the line? It was. And the ball's up. That is an... And West Osha says they have it on a double fumble. And it is recovered by West Osha. And what you saw was the ball come out twice. We talked about this pregame, Matt. And that is the ball is... Wet is not the word. So the ball's going to be very slippery. It gets cold, it makes it even more slippery, and you saw the ball two times come out on that play, Westosha, with the ball deep in Badger territory. Pitches out. Nowhere, and I can't believe, maybe it looked like a face mask on that play. I was thinking the same thing, Bob. The head snapped back, but nobody called it. So it's going to be no gain. The ball set at the 16-yard line. First, or I should say second and 10 from the 16. Seven, seven. if you're just joining us. Out of the gun. West Osha. After the turnover by Lake Geneva Badger. He looks, throws, and that one right through his hands. That was number six, Meininger, and you don't see that happen very often. Again, a slick football. Watch it here. As you see Coppell right there, and that could, ball could be at the four right now, but instead we're third and ten from the 16. Solid defense out of Lake Geneva. Ball be the wind behind him if they're going to look to uh, for a field goal. Ball through, and it's a pick. Oh, there's nobody there. 30, 35, 40, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, pick six. And there's a flag. There's a flag at the 39-yard line. 39-yard line of West Osha. Is this coming back? It was a push in the back. It looked like oh my goodness. against the Badgers. It, they didn't need to do that. As Oh, my goodness. It was a clear pass. Watch, watch this pick. Are we Did we have it? We're going to try to bring it to you in a second. And here we go. Watch the pick. This is a... And that was, by the way, the flag was a block in the back. Mac called it. And there's nobody there. He could still be running. He could be running to Illinois right now. Right. Now watch the block in the back. Right there. Right there is the block in the back. Ooh. I mean, it's away from the play. It's it unnecessary. sure is. Badger, and that was Alec Welch that that's going to be called back. They're going to call that at the 50 or 49 yard line after the penalty. So Lake Geneva with the ball after the pick. No points on the board. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You could have, have asked for an easier pick six, but... There is no easy pick six. Sorry, Matt. 
<laughs> there was when no. He easier. read that. He yes. read it beautiful. He had the speed to get through. You're right. Once he had it, there was nothing but green. It looked like uh, the ball was thrown a little short. Maybe and the ball slipped out of his hand. Seven seven tied here. Nine minutes forty seconds left. First quarter. Ball across, rumbling through, cross the 50, cross the 45, down to the 43-yard line. If you're just joining us, it's tied at 7, early first quarter, and I just feel as if the emotion, I played a whole game already. <laughs> Are you out of breath as much as I am? It is a good one. Uh, like I said, I've been waiting for this. So that's a gain of eight, second and two at the 43-yard line. Well, if anything, if Westosha caught a break of all breaks, this is the one to make the Badgers earn it now on the short field. And a handoff right through the line across the 35 down to the 34-yard line. That was Badger number 32. Notstad, Notstad doing a good job, but that offensive line just blew a hole. You could drive a truck through it. Watch it. You see that hole? Holy moly. And here we are. Under center, one to the far. We have motion, and that's going to cause a jump. So that should be against West Osha. It's going to cost them five. So it's going to be first and five at the 29-yard line. That was good motion. Good, solid motion. Coppell calling the audible. Again, can you, you should be able to see it looks like fog. That's not fog. That's a mist rain coming down right now. Capel under center, one to the far, nobody to the near. We have motion. Capel goes to, ho to hold and a little bit of a sneak nowhere. Drops him at the 30. That's a loss of one. LaBelle on the stop for West OSHA, doing a good job. They have to stop the run if they're going to do anything against Lake Geneva. Capel hands it over. Big run and crosses down, first down to the 20-yard line. Nice, solid run out of Lake Geneva. First and 10 at the 20. By the way, that was by 32 Oppener. And again now, one to the far. Coppell under center. Oppener in the backfield. Motion. Coppell keeps it. Moves it down about four or five. See where they mark it. Should be right around the 15-yard line. And this is what Lake Geneva will do. They will just wear you out. And that is just outside the 15-yard line. So it's going to be a gain of five, second and five, a long five. And we're starting to see a lot from Matthew O'Grady. Hands it off. Touchdown. That is number 32, of course, not in stat. Nottenstadt gives the lead to Lake Geneva. 6.28 left. It's 13-7. Lake Geneva, and they're going to go for the extra point to try to go up by the full seven. That's a 15-yard run for that young man. O'Grady kicks. It drives it through the uprights. So six minutes, 28 seconds left to play. First quarter. Oh, my goodness. 14-7 Lake Geneva. WGTD Sports. Matt, this has the makings not to be a good one, but to be a great one. West Osha needs to come back, and they need to be able to answer on the offensive side of the ball. 
Well, they were able to get the ball back on a mishandle by Matthew O'Grady, their last chance down, but through the interception. And Lake Geneva only see – I didn't jump that time. I was kind of anticipating something like that would that, happen. That is a cannon that gets fired on the far north side of the field every time there's a field goal during homecoming at Lake Geneva. And our producer, Scott Nelson, just about had a heart attack for the second time in a row. <laughs> it's okay. You can get up from uh, out from under the desk. It's okay. So we're going to wait for Lake Geneva to kick off here. The Badgers up 14-7, and he's going to scoot it. Nice catch. Going to take it at the 25, the 30, the 35. The big man up front, that is number 17 that grabbed it. That's Pinter. Pinter, 6'3", 230-pound junior, wide receiver, and he's a DB. Good hands. But you don't think of a guy that big with those type of hands. I was a little worried about the ball popping. Well, and I saw a lot of water splash up off his jersey when he got hit. Yes. Yeah, I'll go along with that one. That's They are completely they're, – they're six minutes into the game, and they everybody's con, uh, completely drenched. Out of the gun. Hands it off. There's some room. That is number 38, Taylor, the tank, doing a good job getting across the 45. Or they're going to mark it right at the 45, and they do. So it's going to be a gain of, of 7 to 8. We're going to call it second and a short 3. Out of the gun. He's going to keep it. And the ball's out. Lake Geneva says it's theirs, and it is. That was Coppell. And the ball went flopping out again. It's very, very wet. That is going to be a major issue. The team with the fewest turnovers is a team that's going to put the W on the board. It's a great takeaway. I don't think it was the greatest play call. It was going to get stopped in the backfield, and then, yes, the rain, the slippery conditions are a factor. Good job by that defensive front to knock the ball loose. Well, they're going to hit you. They're going to jar you in the next week. So quickly now, Lake Geneva, one to the near, one to the far. He's going to be a keeper. P.J. Doyle brings it to the, I'll see where they mark it, right on the 40-yard line. It's going to be a gain of five. Second and five, 14 7. If you're just joining us, 543 left to play. First quarter, and there's been three turnovers. And that's going to be a face mask, and it's going to cost Lake Geneva, I mean, should say West OSHA, some property. Going to take it now down to the 35 yard line. Inadvertent. When the referees throw the flags, they're flying into the wind tonight. Doyle brings his guys up. He's waiting for waiting for the sticks to get moved. Well, the sticks are gusting on the far side of the field there. Yeah, they are. One to the near, one to the far. Doyle under center, looking to be able to on the pitch. That goes out to Richardson. Good job on the defensive side by West Osha. That's going to be a gain of four, and they're going to take it out to the 31-yard line. Second and six. Did you have the over on that one? Six and a half, maybe? It's a, it's a short... It's a... Short seven, a long six. How's that? And that's going to cost West OSHA five. Boy, P.J. Doyle doing a great job on the count. The that's number two. A little bit of a head-shoulder bob. Two, so that's going to take it all the way to the 27-yard line, 
And it's going to be second, and we're going to call it a short two. It's a keeper by Doyle. Crosses over, enough for the first down. Just short of the 20-yard line and about the 21. So again, Lake Geneva, it's just consistency. It's just, it's wearing you down. That's their football game. And what makes it so tough is your defense is out there for so long that by the second half, you're gassed. You've got nothing left in the tank, and Lake Geneva is just rumbling, stumbling, and gaining the yards they need. And putting points at the end. Good job. You know... Have it, do you remember the the the, uh, the the movie The Replacements? It's one of my wife's favorite movies, actually. It is one of mine, and, and I'm not your wife, so yeah. But uh, the uh, the idea here is quicksand. Yeah, you know, quicksand. Think bad things happen, and they're small in the beginning, and they just kind of build up, and the next thing you know, you you go under, and that's what Lake Geneva does to to beat you. Doyle, under center, hands it off. That goes to number 32, Nodstat, right behind the tackle. And that's going to cross, see where they mark it. I think they're going to mark it at about the 12-yard line. It's going to be a gain of a few. It's going to be third and a short one at the 12-yard line. Well, and what do we know about quicksand, quicksand, Bob, is when you panic, you sink faster. That's right. That's exactly. And that's it because your brain can't think that fast without making a mistake. And here we go. Good defensive stand, but falling forward. And that should be enough across the 10 down to about the 9, 8 or 9-yard line. And in this weather, the running team that that just is methodical, is the one that's going to be able to move the ball with the most efficiency. Absolutely. If you haven't started, it's 14-7. It's all Badgers, as there's been a couple of turnovers, and they're deep now in West Osha territory. Handing it off, moving, that's a touchdown. That's P.J. Doyle. Doyle, on the quarterback sneak, gets around the corner, cuts up, nobody touches him, touchdown, Lake Geneva. And that's Doyle's second touchdown. So, that's a first one. Somebody, I guess, they, they just announced, put your laser away. I know it's happening more and more in different things, but... Uh, Going for the extra point. Ball up. And good. Two minutes, 18 seconds left to play. Lake Geneva, 21. West OSHA, 7. This is WGTD Sports. I'm Bob Haggerty. That's Matt Schwantz. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be right back. Here at Pet Supplies Plus in Kenosha, we have everything you need to keep your pets happy, healthy, and thriving. Pet Supplies Plus in Kenosha. Come visit your favorite neighborhood pet store, now open at 3755 80th Street. We have all you need to keep your pets happy. Get your dog groomed at our full service salon or keep your own bathroom clean by using our self-pet wash. See you soon, neighbor. See you soon, neighbor. For some students, the struggle to make up what was lost continues. Academic doubts may linger, but the class has to keep moving whether your child gets it or not. At Sylvan, our teachers have the time to give the individualized support each student needs. We'll focus on exactly what your child needs to get caught up with grades and confidence. Wherever your child needs to go, we can help get them there. If you're ready to prioritize your child's education this year, get all the information you need by going online and searching Sylvan Learning of Kenosha. We're back. The kickoff from Lake Geneva through the end zone. So it's going to be first and ten uh, for West Osha. Their biggest thing now, don't panic, quicksand. Quicksand. 
Don't panic. Move the ball. Put points on the board. You're in this game. You can score. You've got a high-flying offense. You could score. Let Capel, the most athletic guy on your team, be the rope in the quicksand that pulls right. you out to safety. And across. That's Capel on the carry. So he gets a couple. Move the football and start getting in position to get on the other side of the field. But right now, it's, it's Lake Geneva. They're just clicking on all cylinders. Yeah. And that's why you need to keep your offense out on the field. Capel, out of the gun. Hands it off. Good defense, and now there was a flag at the feet of the quarterback. Capel's looking around like, what did I do? So that's going to be a legal shift on the defense. So that's going to be, what, five yards? Oh, they're going to decline. Why would they decline? Well, I'm trying to figure out why you'd decline that. You'd get five yards, you didn't make five yards, and you'd get the down back. I think the Badgers are feeling very confident right now that they just need one more play to make West Tosha Central punt this ball away. Handing it off, and no good. And the tank went nowhere that time. Stuck in the mud. So it's going to be for fourth and five. So it'll be three and out. That's not what you want to have happen. Again, it looks like it's fog. It's not fog. That's rain. That's driving. And a good kick. See the... And it just dies. Not much of a bounce. So Lake Geneva is going to take back at about the 47-yard line. First and 10, Lake Geneva. There, that's a great shot. That's the driving rain that they're playing in right now. Three turnovers. One INT, two fumbles. And uh, Lake Geneva's put 14 points on the board from turnovers. And you disagreed with the call a moment ago why you wouldn't accept the penalty yeah. on West Tosha. And here, here's my philosophy. Your defense has done everything right. Second and 11, give them an extra down or That's make true. them earn the short yardage. There you go. There you go. I'm one. Push them back. Push them yes. back way back. Doyle, under center. One to the near. He's going to keep it. No, he handed it off. Good fake. Crosses over the 50-yard line. And it is 21-7. That'll probably be the last play of the first quarter. We'll wait and see. And it will. Lake Geneva's going to let the clock run out. 21-7. End of one here in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. WGTD Sports. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. For some students, the struggle to make up what was lost continues. Academic doubts may linger, but the class has to keep moving whether your child gets it or not. At Sylvan, our teachers have the time to give the individualized support each student needs. We'll focus on exactly what your child needs to get caught up with grades and confidence. Wherever your child needs to go, we can help get them there. If you're ready to prioritize your child's education this year, get all the information you need by going online and searching Sylvan Learning of Kenosha. Fiction Skateboards have been in business since 2015 and skating since 1988. Located in Twin Lakes, Wisconsin, we are veteran and family owned. Fiction Skateboards is active in giving back to the community while also growing the skateboard scene in the area. Visit Fiction Skateboards in Twin Lakes for all your skateboarding needs. Hot Government. 
Hot government refers to honest, open, and transparent government. Our mission is to provide and support honest, open, and transparent government with the intent of allowing citizens to monitor, assess, assist, and hold it accountable. Securing your vote by protecting the integrity of elections. We're back. Quickly, Lake Geneva. Doyle. He looked back. Nobody open. Decided to carry it. Crosses back now over the 45, or I should say down past the 45 to the 44-yard line. Third down, big third down for the defense of West Osha. Well, J.P. Doyle ran into a wall in the middle of the field when it looked like he could tuck and roll. All of a sudden, big number 62, Brandon Stewart. He's only 5'9", but he's 220. And the senior had a big shadow on that play. Still third and short. 11-22, left second quarter, 21-7, Lake Geneva. Gives it to the big man. No, P.J. holds it, and this is going to be where the mark. I think he's right at the stick. I, You're right. I think they're going to give it to him. I think he's right. Well, two of the referees gave him another yard. That's well enough for a first down, and it is. First down for Lake Geneva. The Badgers undefeated. They caused a couple big turnovers tonight. West Osha causing a turnover as well, but they were not able to take advantage of that. Doyle under center. One receiver near. Nobody far. Not dead and back. Nowhere. As that was a great, see how the the uh, offense, uh, the defensive line blocked down on that. Really stuffed it. That's a gain of one, second and nine. So, we're. That's going to be a timeout. West OSHA, WGTD Sports. Matt, you know, there's a lot of time. They can really, uh, it, th this is a, a huge possibility. If they're able to uh, make the stop on this possession, get it back, this is not out of the realm. They are not out of this game, especially with the offense that West OSHA has. Let's go back and talk about the quicksand. Yeah. You can't have the jitters when you're down 14. You still have a full, you have 10 minutes, so it's almost a full quarter to play before the half. Right. Figure out something that... You have three quarters of a game. Yes, three quarters. Absolutely. So figure out your offense and start putting together some productive plays, something that's going to trick the defense. Because right now, Lake Geneva is... They yeah. are predicting what's going to happen before well, you snap the ball. And I would tell you, with the defense out there, Troy, uh, Troy Bow is the head uh, is the head of the defense. I know what he's going. He's going after the ball. That's the type of player he was. That's the type of coach he is. He's going to try to knock that ball free. And sometime during this game, you're going to see it. On a night like this, that's can, not going to be too difficult. Doyle, nowhere. Good job. Defensive line going down the line of scrimmage, spreading it out. That's going to be a gain of, oh, maybe two. It's going to be third, and I'm going to call it seven from the 41-yard line, just inside the 41-yard line. This would be a gigantic stop for the Falcons and a gigantic momentum booster for West Hosea Central. Doyle under center. Motion. Doyle's looking to throw it. He's going to be under some pressure. Down he goes. So Doyle looked to be able to pick it up, wound up losing it back to the original line of scrimmage. The ball's going to be placed at the 44-yard line where it's going to be fourth and 10. That was a great tackle by number 54, Landon Mathis, the sophomore. But that happened because of good, uh, a good coverage downfield. Doyle came to the near side looking for something to happen, and there was nobody open. That allowed Landis to come to be able to make the hit. Nothing developed. That's right. 
So looking to be able to kick the ball. Good snap. Solid kick. And the wind, you saw the wind get a hold of that one. Picks it up at the out of bounds at about the 15 yard line. Now this is tough. You know, the, the idea, the rule for a punt returner, don't let the ball hit the turf. Because you never know which way the ball's gonna bounce at, the, at that particular point. But in this type of weather, it's so easy to hit and go right through the, the arms or to try to pick it up and to lose it. And what you, once you touch it, that's a live ball. So doing a good job is to be able to pick it up and go. 21-7, Lake Geneva, but West Osha with the ball, deep in their own territory, at their own 15-yard line, first and 10. Capel, uh, out of the gun. Hands it off, nowhere. No, he keeps it. Far side, big hit, and there's the flag. That's going to cost Lake Geneva 15. I thought it was Capel too, but there was another one in there. That's number 11, Joshua Tuperser. We'll wait and see on that. But that is going to cost Lake Geneva 15 on the unnecessary roughness. I don't think he was out of bounds when he got hit. It looked legal from... I mean, yeah. Was it a hard hit? Yeah, they knocked it. He knocked him into the next county. But if if he's in bounds, he's legal. So the ball's going to be at the forty yard line. Capel, out of the gun, one to the near, two to the far, one inside, waiting for the snap. Looking. Capel, he needs to get rid of it. And what a great job. That is, I'm trying to see a number. That's number 17 out of West Osha. That's Pinter. Pinter. Pinter just sat right on the line, got the ball two feet. You only need one in high school and then falling out of bounds. But that he sat in that, that hole in the zone. Well, the secondary for the Badgers came flying across, and Capel, good job of keeping his composure, almost falling over right. to lose track of yards, but then he found his receiver, and Pinter, like you said, just waiting, securing the football, and falling out of bounds. Big run. Taylor, the tank. He needs to be the X factor for this team. Well, you're right. If he's going to... If if they're going to be successful, he's going to be successful running the ball. And that's going to cross over the 45, down to the 44-yard line. Capel. Out of the gun. Taylor getting hit at the line of scrimmage, falling forward, going to get one or two out of it. They're going to give him one. Ball at the 43-yard line, second and nine. 21-7. 7-18 left to play, second quarter. Lake Geneva up by 14. Three big turnovers. One by Lake Geneva. Two and 14 points scored off of those two on West Osha. Capel out of the shotgun. He's going to look. Has some pressure. Moving around. Rolling out. Throws it. Did he get a foot down? Incomplete. 21-7 Lake Geneva. I believe that was number six, Colin Meininger. Trying to keep his feet in bounds as he didn't secure the football. 21 7. Lake Geneva up by the two scores. Well, third and eight, third and eight and a half. This is a huge play to keep this drive alive for the Falcons. 
Capel looks, throws, fires. Oh, my goodness. Down to the 20, the 10, oh my the 5, goodness. and out of bounds. What happened? He went for the pick, missed the pick, and it wound up being a huge play for West Osha. Number 27, Eli Brummett. Went for the pick six. Pinter with the catch. If Brummett keeps his eyes on Pinter, that's an interception. Well, that's a pick six. Didn't happen right through his hands, and the ball all the way down to the six-yard line, first and ten, West Osha. Fantastic job for Coppell to keep this drive alive. And, You're all the way down near the goal line. And Capel, what an arm. That was a rocket. In the rain. That was a slushy rocket. Hands it off. Moves across. Taylor, the tank, crosses to five. He's going to be down to right around the four-ish. We'll wait and see where they mark it. Again, 21-7, Lake Geneva. But West Osha driving. You're right. The ball is on the four-yard line. Ball on the four. Second and goal at the four. Quarterbacks. That's Capel as he's thrown, suplexed backwards. See where they're going to mark it. They're going to give him forward progress, probably back to the five. It can be a loss of one or to the six, back to the original line of scrimmage. It's going to be third and goal from the six-yard line. I was expecting an inside pitch to Landon Taylor on that play, and instead Capel got it and went absolutely nowhere. nowhere. Capel, out of the gun. Puts it up. Oh, boy. And, yes. We couldn't see who pushed off to who. I think Meininger is going to be guilty of the offensive pass interference, unfortunately, for the Falcons. We'll wait and see. That's going to be a big penalty if it is. They're bringing it back. They it was, did not call the touchdown. It was definitely a jump ball. It was just a matter of if you played it clean, who's going to come up with it? Offensive pass interference. That is the call. Well, that is huge because you go from third and six to third. Third and 21. And you're going into the wind even for a field goal opportunity. Third and a rainstorm. Third and a monsoon if I'm being honest about honest it. Honest about right. it, yes. This is homecoming, by the way, for Lake Geneva. So stick around for halftime. Out of the gun. Capel does a good job moving. He has to throw it. He's going to take the hit and down. And that's our, that hurts. They moved the ball all the way down to the four-yard line at one point. A couple of, of uh, penalties and a sack and they find themselves back at the 40. But a great job by the Badgers secondary, locking up those receivers, making sure Capella has nobody to throw it to. Right. And on top of that, Capella trying to find left, nothing there. Right, nothing there. Go in the middle, and that's where he's going to land. He stepped up, and the pocket just collapsed around him. Fourth down. You got to go for it. One on neat both sides. Capel out of the gun. Puts it up, and I think that, yeah, that's long. And that just slipped out of his hand. It did, unfortunately. So, 4-16 left in the second quarter. 21-7, West Osha. They turn it over on downs. WGTD Sports. Good evening, everybody. Bob Haggerty here. The guy next, of course is Matt Schwantz. I know it says 21-7, closer game. Couple of very big plays to start out the game. Couple of big turnovers. And 
then we've settled in to a, a game of Lake Geneva dominating on the ground. Well, if you missed the first quarter, you would have think this was a 0-0 game. Right. Coming across, doing a good job crossing the 40-yard line is Lake Geneva, number 10, O'Grady. Watch O'Grady. He's just a sophomore, 6 foot, 185 pound, but he's a speedster. All everything speed. If he is in open territory, say goodbye. Watch out. So crossing over to the 42-yard line, first and 10, Lake Geneva. West Osha needs a stop. Crossing over again, number 32 out of the Badgers. That is Nodstat. Nodstat crosses West Osha territory, and that's going to be marked at about the 48-yard line, first and 10 Badgers. He's been a very busy, busy Badger in this first half. Again, 21-7, Badgers leading by 14 with the ball. Doyle hands it off, and they're just beating West Osha up now, up front. Again, that's 32, not stat. And that takes it all the way down to the 36-yard line. So now the offensive juggernaut of Lake Geneva, they're running the ball for 10 yards at a clip. Well, when you have a powerful offense and you follow your blockers, you can kind of get that force to move with you. 21-7, Badgers. And here we go. And that's going to be West Osha. That's going to be the third. That's a, and that's all on the head bob that's going on right now. That's the third false start offsides against West Osha's defense. Is that J.P. Doyle, the magician again under center, doing that head bobbing? It's that little head bob. Doyle, under center, one to the near, nobody to the far. We have motion. Doyle's going to keep it, and he's just going to cross over to the 30-yard line. Again, if you're just joining us, 21-7, three minutes left to play in the half. Now, remember, in high school football, there's no two-minute warning. So if you're new to high school football or joining us, no two-minute warning in high school football. So we'll go right past that. Normally, that's that timeout that's taken. Doyle, under center. He's going to keep it. No, he hands it off. Not a stat. Crosses over. Doesn't get a whole lot. Gets down to about the 27. It's going to be short. By it's a gonna water be droplet. It's going to be third and less than one. Doyle hands it off. Big run. That's not a stat. And he's going to cross it down to the 20 on the first down. First down, Badgers. 2.06 left to play in the first half. Now, again, when does the clock stop? In high school ball, if there's a first down and they're moving the sticks, while they're moving the sticks, they stop the clock for those few seconds. Doyle, under center. He keeps it. Crosses the 15 down to the 10. He hits the 10-yard line and slides all the way to the 5. Looked like an army crawl for Doyle, just moving across the field. Good, solid move from Lake Geneva. With Lake Geneva, it, it rains and then it pours, and they just keep pouring it on. Going to wait and see. Timeout Time West Osha. One minute, 30 seconds left in the first half. 21-7, Lake Geneva, and they are down big into West Osha territory. To let everybody know what's going on, uh, remember that this is halftime from Lake Geneva, and we will be covering anything, even with the weather, that happens on the field. But if you haven't 
uh, been able to watch us, there are times in which we will have to turn off the audio. And that's because if they hear the music in the background, they can actually turn off the stream. That's the rain, by the way, as it is really coming down here in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. So we will cover everything that we can, but it may be without audio as we want to make sure that we don't lose the stream. If something were to happen and we do get turned off, we will create a new stream and you'll be able to come back with our apologies. We haven't had that happen this season yet. Knock on wood, we're going to try to keep it. Flag. This one might be against the Badgers. And it is. So they called Doyle on the head bob. A little too much dancing behind the line of scrimmage. Well, the, somebody, I'm sure, can finally, they complained and said, how much movement, how much body and head movement are you going to let them do? They're going to let them do the tango. Doyle is going to keep it. He, any options? To the five. O'Grady's going to take it inside the five. They're going to see where they mark it. The three-yard line is what we're being told. O'Grady doing a good job, and Doyle on the pitch. So it's going to be second and goal from the three. Lake Geneva will take the time, and if they can get it, the yards. Doyle, under center, out of the pistol. Hands it off. That's to Richardson. Not a lot of movement. See where they mark that. I think they'll give him forward progress for just a little bit. They're going to give him a yard down to the two. It's going to be second and goal or third and goal from the two-yard line. And we have an injured injury timeout at the goal line. So he's talking with the trainer. Always good to see. Landon Mathis getting to his feet. By the way, if you see the pink, remember that uh, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I don't know anybody that has somehow not been affected by this terrible disease. So those that are suffering, you're in our thoughts. That is West Osha number 54, Mathis. 5'10", 195 pounds sophomore. In other words, he has room to grow. So here we go. 104 left to play, 21 7, Lake Geneva. They have the ball deep into West Osha territory. The ball on the one. It's third and goal from inside the one-yard line. One. Lake Geneva looking to be able to make the stand. I can't imagine anybody getting this football besides J.P. Doyle. But I have not been right sometimes, and I wouldn't be uh, ashamed if I was wrong this time. Give it to Doyle. Give it to O'Grady. Give it to your best athletes. That's what they're looking to do. I'm going to go behind that line. They're massive. Lake Geneva is going to take a timeout. We'll be right back. 21-7, Lake Geneva. My name is Frank J. Paris, and I am the primary and principal uh, owner of the law offices of Frank J. Paris. Been an attorney since 1985, so over 30 years. I can help you with all your needs in criminal defense, traffic, DUIs, or any other situations that you or a loved one is in trouble. Please call me at any time at 656-9906. I'm available by email at fparisfjpllc.com, Facebook, or any other social media. We're back. WGTD Sports. 
21-7, Lake Geneva. Up, going into 33 seconds before halftime. Again, don't go anywhere as we have prom that will be taking place for Lake Geneva. We'll try to at least bring you the visual so uh, side. If they're playing music, we won't. We'll on the audio. Doyle. Everybody taking their time. Doyle is going to make sure everybody's set. Audible by Doyle. And we're waiting to see exactly what's going on. So they just took it to 40 seconds on the clock. And here we go. Toughest job in the building. And I would not they couldn't pay me to be the clock guy. Doyle with a flag. West Osha thinks that it is against Lake Geneva, and it's going to be a false start, and it's going to cost him five. So now all these little head bobs we were talking about that they were able to get away with and have three offsides against West Osha, they're watching for that. They're calling it now against Lake Geneva, two on this series. Well, now you're faking out your offensive line. Doyle has the ball. And touchdown. Nobody went with Doyle. Doyle literally out walked there. in. Nobody went with him. He was on an island. Surrounded by water. An inch of it. Yeah, well, that's true, too. But that was, everybody thought it was handed off. That's the only thing that I could think is that they looked and said, you know, that, that he didn't have the ball. It was such a weird developing play. It was. Ball's up. And good. 33.3 left to play in the second quarter. 28-7. WGTD Sports, Lake Geneva with the lead. So... You know, if you look at it, Matt, now you get in down by 21. You're going to go in by halftime. You don't want to turn it over. A turnover would be a big problem right now. But, you know, if the opportunity arises and you get a good return, do you make, do you try to make something happen? You do, but you have to cut down on the mental mistakes. You are causing yourself five yards, sometimes 15. Right. If you can cut down on these mistakes, you have an opportunity to get back into this ball game. Now, it starts with getting your offense going, stopping the Badgers on their offense. And how do you continue to stay on the field? You're going to get the ball back to start the second half. Now, can you make something of it? What are you able to do? Right. What are you going to talk about in the locker room that's going to jumpstart this offense? And then that might be able to propel your defense. Well, I think it does. You keep your offense on the field, your defense looks real good because they don't have to play. And when they do, they're not tired. Well, they're getting a breather. So they kick it off. That's just a little pooch. And out the back of the end zone. So they're going to take it at the 20-yard line. Capel, good question here. Does he take a knee, go in down by 21? Does he see if he can run something? And if he can run something, maybe he can throw it on second down. 33 seconds. I'm just checking to see how, how many, many timeouts time right. that West Tosha has. I think they have one, one remaining. That's right. Badgers have two. So if they turn the ball over, that's a worst-case scenario for West Osha. Capel looks to throw it. Moves around. He's going to look for the sideline. Good job. And he goes out of bounds, so he gives his team another chance to play in the first half. And doesn't use that timeout. Even if they can have a chance at a field goal, something, 
to be able to put it in so they can uh, so they can have something positive at the end of the quarter. Well, this is quite remarkable. The Badgers are everywhere. They're swarming you. You can't throw the ball to your receivers on the right side. You can't throw them in the, on the left side. By the time you find somebody open, you've got everybody in your face. So good job by Capel to get out of bounds and not have to use that last time out. First down at the 30. Quickly. And breaks a tackle and goes out of bounds. That is... Number six, Menninger. Menninger doing a good job. Broke that tackle, got few yards, and got out of bounds. That's a triple play. Well, Menninger had the football and the opportunity to just go out of bounds. He tried to go back he turned to the, the wrong way. Yes. And then he was able to break a couple of tackles so and I find guess, his way so out. So I guess he didn't turn the wrong way. No, he turned the right way in the end. Capel looks to throw it. He's going to go deep. And out of bounds. So Badgers looking, going, I didn't touch him, coach. Didn't touch him. Don't throw a flag, ref. The ball was not catchable anyway. So they're going to mark the ball back to the 41-yard line. It's going to be second and 10, 12 seconds. So maybe two plays, depending on what you're looking at. Two or we have two to the far, one to the near. Throws it and overthrows him. He was throwing. That's a cover two that wound up being cover three because they didn't really – the uh, middle linebacker didn't release. And so, Manager was just overwhelmed. There were three defenders in his face. Right. Score 28-7. Badgers. 28-7 Badgers. Seven and a half seconds left in the second quarter. Capel. Puts it up. And falls incomplete. So that's going to be third. One play, one second. Is there a... There is a flag. And is that going to be roughing the, the passer? So that's going to be able to put... Capel can now throw it in the end zone with that 15 yards. That'll put him at about the 45-yard line of Lake Geneva. They're going to mark it at the 44. First and 10, but that doesn't matter. It will be the last play unless there's another defensive penalty. Last play of the court, of the half. Lots of time. And he's hit. Capel didn't feel the man coming from the blind side. That's the end of the first quarter here. I should say the first half. Here in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, the score, Lake Geneva 28, West OSHA 7. This is WGTD Sports. As we were saying, we would be looking at homecoming. This is the way it always seemed. Do you remember homecoming? I didn't go to homecoming, Bob. But I do recall... So I was a PA address announcer for right. basketball and football. So I have seen these kids grow up before my very eyes. It is a magical moment for for these guys, the way yeah. that everything is kind of brought together. Um, homecoming court, look, it takes weeks of it, – it, it's practice. Practice makes perfect. And, look, every time I do it, it just keeps getting better. I absolutely enjoy it. Um, watching these kids do their thing on the field. Yeah. I do. Well, my daughter was uh, homecoming court uh, when she was in high school, my, my youngest. And, you know, we never figured anybody in our family would ever get elected to the court. I mean, that, that's a big deal. And they had a lot of, she really enjoyed it. She's got some very pleasant memories looking back on her experience uh, in high school with homecoming. So it's really nice for these kids that, that have that opportunity. 
We're going to go to break. When we come back, we'll be with homecoming festivities. Don't go anywhere. WGTD, the score, 28-7. We're at halftime. Badgers up. Fiction Skateboards have been in business since 2015 and skating since 1988. Located in Twin Lakes, Wisconsin, we are veteran and family owned. Fiction Skateboards is active in giving back to the community while also growing the skateboard scene in the area. Visit Fiction Skateboards in Twin Lakes for all your skateboarding needs. Hot Government. Hot Government refers to honest, open, and transparent government. Our mission is to provide and support honest, open, and transparent government with the intent of allowing citizens to monitor, assess, assist, and hold it accountable, securing your vote by protecting the integrity of elections. For more info, visit hotgovernment.com. Hi, I'm Rebecca from the Kenosha County Aging and Disability Resource Center. Are you caring for a family member or friend? If so, we can help. ADRC offers a wide range of options to support both you and the person you are caring for. Services are free and confidential and include a medical equipment loan closet, dementia care support, assistance with Medicare. The ADRC can also help you connect with community resources for transportation, nutrition, and help in the home. Call 262-605-6646. Hi, I'm Lydia Spotswood, and I'm running for mayor in the city of Kenosha. As a mom, a grandmother, and a retired nurse, I believe every child deserves to grow up in a healthy community, a place that is inclusive, welcoming, and sustainable. Kenosha is transforming as new developments and urban renewal initiatives kick into high gear. As your mayor, I will work to establish our shared vision for Kenosha. My experience in public and private sector development will serve our community well in the years ahead. I see no defeat. No defeat. I have the best. In me. In me. So I require the best. Warriors like us. We make our own. We make our own destiny. We make our own destiny. We push back in the face of adversity. We turn off the heat. Is it in you too? Make your move. Make your move. Make your move. Make your move. And we're back. Waiting for everything to start. Oh, they're going through their athletic hall of fame right now. You know, as a former PA announcer, hearing your name called in front of the fans, that's got its own moment. I bet it does. It's built in. It feels good. We'll be right back. Hello. What's up? Hello. 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 It's just a kind thing to do. Sometimes he wants friends, so he say hello. It all starts with hello. It might change the world and make everybody nicer. I don't know. Maybe it's just magic. Maybe if you say hi to one person a day, think about the fact that you might be potentially changing that person's life for the better. The uh, fire medic program we have here at Gateway is something that the students uh, prefer because they're able to take their fire one and EMT skills and jump right into some advanced concepts and preparing for the candidate physical ability test. They take the general, ed general education courses and then they're right into the paramedic portion of the, de of the degree. And so they're really accomplishing fire and EMS in a big way and leaving with some major credentials in two years. 
Right now we're at Kansasville Fire and Rescue. Uh, our students go through um, sets and reps as they rotate through a time and quality standard for each position on an engine company. And as we have uh, one of the three crews not involved at that particular time in the evolutions with the company, we pull them off and we give them concentrated areas of instruction. Right out the gate, you're learning about your gear, what keeps you safe, putting it on, taking it off, putting it on, taking it off, you know, so that it's all muscle memory. Um, and then after that, you're out the door, you're on the fire grounds, you're in the burn building, you're on the splashboard, you're up on the roof. You name it, you get your hands on it, and you're going to learn how to use it to the, to the best of your abilities. So we throw a lot at our students, and they're immersed in, in all those different various portions of the learning. They bring it all together when they go out and perform uh, the evolutions outside with the engine company. When you're actually physically out there doing it, then you get how it operates. You get and it all like comes together. So starting from ground zero, you know, what do you have to lay out, like situational awareness, looking around and seeing what's going on and just making sure that your team is where it should be, everybody's working in unison. Well, because you're coming out of the program with some major credentials and uh, you've been put through a training process that looks at the quality of the work that you do and the time frame that you do it in, um, as the program ga gains stature, so will the graduates. There are several in this class that um, have already been given conditional offers of employment. You do your learning here, so that way when you go to your department, it's, it's automatic. So it, it makes you seem a little less green to your department when you get there. This program provides solutions to almost every risk that firefighters face. And it becomes a, a way of life, a habit, if you will, of managing yourself and the way that you respond to incidents. So um, they have a good future ahead of them. I am going to go career. So this fall I will start the paramedic portion of the fire medic program. Um, after that, um, start applying, get ready for the CPAT, and hopefully it doesn't take too long to get full time. I love the two departments that I work at. They're very, very supportive of what I do and, and what I want to do in my future. Eventually, I would like to go career, but for now, you know, staying home, local boy, working for the fire department. Here at Pet Supplies Plus in Kenosha, we have everything you need to keep your pets happy, healthy, and thriving. Pet Supplies Plus in Kenosha. Come visit your favorite neighborhood pet store, now open at 3755 80th Street. We have all you need to keep your pets happy. Get your dog groomed at our full service salon or keep your own bathroom clean by using our self-pet wash. See you soon, neighbor. See you soon, neighbor. We're back, homecoming, as we're waiting to be able to cover something for you. Uh, the score, 28-7, if you're just joining. Badgers winning the game of consistency. A couple of big turnovers leading to touchdowns for Badger. And the one turnover that Westosha was able to create, they weren't able to be uh, to, to take advantage of it. Well, if we want to say something positive about what West Tosha Central has done, um, since it was 21-7 to in the first quarter, the Badgers have only put up seven points right. since then. Right. So West Tosha just shooting themselves in the foot with miscues, uh, but credit Lake Geneva. They have done everything right so far. They had the one turnover, and then the defense was able to stop that from, from happening. That was their... And big. that was almost a pick six. Yes. It wound up being a pick and called back for a block in the back. And also the controversial late now, hit out of bounds. We're going to let you be able to watch now we're, we're having the homecoming court come out. Association is an American. 
an organization that combats muscular dystrophy and the diseases of nervous systems and muscular systems. DECA has partnered with the MDA since 1983. Our mission tonight is to send a child to the MDA summer camp which costs $800 per child. At MDA camp, kids who have neuromuscular disease can discover a world created specifically for them and meet many other kids sharing the same needs and experiences. MDA campers dream about summer camp all year and often say it's better than Christmas. Almost all campers agree that's the best week of the year. This year, Badger Decca hopes to raise enough money not only to send one child, but two to summer camp. So get out your change and get ready for this miracle minute. Get ready, get set, and go. And we're back. As uh, some of the teams are starting to come back out, you got the, you were had the opportunity to see the royalty from Homecoming, and now a nice thing. They're they're doing a nice fundraiser to be able to send uh, uh, a person from muscular dystrophy uh, to be able to go to camp. I like that. I, I really like it too. too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you you hear all the negatives. No, this these are positives. That's that's really nice. So where do you go from here, Matt? I mean, here's the rain. It continues to fall, makes the ball, throwing the ball that much more difficult. Well, we talked about pregame that running the ball was going to be the best way to move the football. We've seen a lot of everything, though. We've seen Capella throw over his receivers. We've seen, uh, we've seen Landon Taylor just destroy on the ground. But where do you go from here? Here's where you go. You get the ball to your best receivers. Get some blocking up front. You're going to give Capel a little more time to throw. And if not, give the ball to your tank. See what you can do. And for the Badgers, just keep doing what you've been doing. But I'm looking at it baby steps. Win the play. If you win the play, you can win a series. If you win the series, you get a first down. Now you've got a first down. What did you do positive? Redo it. You're not reinventing the wheel. Get a couple of first downs. Keep your defense off the, the field. Let them get some more energy. Uh, let them be able to continue to recover and wind up trying to put points on the board. West OSHA's had the opportunity. I mean, they went all the way down to the four-yard line only to wind up back at the 40-yard line where they turn the ball over on downs late in the first half. They can move the ball. Now they need to put the points on the board. And it was unfortunate that they had the penalty in the end zone. It was the offensive pass interference which took them out of the end zone. 15 yards and then turn around from there and they had a couple of big sacks. So again, bend but don't break for Lake Geneva. <coughs> Excuse me. West Tosha, I expect, like you said, baby steps. Let's see how they perform on this first series. If they've learned anything from the first half, it's you're going to need more time for your general behind the center to right. release the football. And can you get open receivers? Because Lake Geneva has been everywhere. Wherever the football is, they are. So baby steps, see if you don't put yourself in a third and long situation. And don't turn the ball and over. And don't turn the ball over. Plus, that has been, if you take those 14 points off the board, yes. we've got a 14-7 game. That's right. So I'm anxious to see what kind of adjustments they've made at halftime for West Tosha Central. The one thing I will tell you is I, I, I know the coaches a little bit. On West Osha, I also know uh, for Badger, they are fine coaches. I can't say that with every team we cover, 
But I, I, I'm going to go out on the on the limb here and tell you that these teams, the coaches on these teams, are some of the best in the state. Both of these teams, and we are privileged to see these two coaches going head to head. I waited for this game all season. You heard me from game from week one. I'm like, oh, I can't wait until the 13th. You know that's Friday the 13th, man. <laughs> I can't wait to see this game, and it, and yes, it, the score has not lived up to expectation, but the game really has lived up to expectations. Absolutely, absolutely. They get to see my hat and my coat. It's cold tonight. It's very damp if you're just joining us. It's very fashionable. You look good. That's, I, I, I like this. I'm trying to think of that. That series, I I have uh, the uh, they're Irish. It's a gang. It's I don't remember the name of it, but this did I I actually bought this before it became popular. It's a very good look for you. I can't say that enough. <laughs> <laughs> I walked into the booth and I said, "Wait, I feel underdressed." That's, you know, that. I had a pea coat in my closet, but that I didn't want to get wet. Didn't have a rain bag for it. Yeah, well, and it's been raining, let me tell you. Oh, Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders, That's okay. That's the name of the guys that wear the coat and, and the hat. Oh, okay. And I've had this now for seven or eight years, well, before you, the Peaky Blinders. You kind of remind me of Sherlock Holmes in that sense. Kind of. I Except be the, the hat's a little different. Just a little, but that's okay. I'll be Watson. I'll be second best. It's okay. Getting ready to start the second half. Badgers are out on the field. The Falcons of West Osha getting ready. Final instructions from the, the coach. And I've had a lot of people, oh, Bob, do, does a coach really matter? Tell that to Colorado. Deion Sanders. With Deion Sanders. The difference. Yes. Coaches matter, ladies and gentlemen. They matter a whole bunch. Not only do they matter in the game, but your, your, uh, your child is better for having a better coach. Waiting. Coming across. And out at the 25. A decent return for the Falcons. So they're going to take over at the 25-yard line. 28-7. Lake Geneva up by 21. Just starting the second half. Koppel out of the gun. Two to the near. Going to hand it off and goes nowhere. That's going to go to number 38, Taylor, the tank. And they've done a great job really preventing him. He had the one big run, 80 yards. Besides that, he has been really shut down tonight. He really has. And Lake Geneva has done a good job up front keeping him honest. Couple, good throw to number six, Menninger. Manager doing a good job using the big body, sat down in the zone, and was able to get the, get it and then break a, a tackle. And he did that late in the second I mean, first half as well. And the ball's going to be out to the 35-yard line. That's a first down for West Osha. That's what they need to do if you're a West Osha, a Falcon fan, as they're now at the 35-yard line. Well, Manager backed up and got a first down. He broke that tackle. They tried it again for a gain of one. Meininger doing a good job. Copel's got to be careful on that throw. He threw that with a lot of black shirts around. Yes. You want to lead your receiver, but not into a brick wall. Copel. 
Throws it again. Good defense. And stuck him. That is number five. Logan Clawson, the senior, 5'8", 150-pounder. Good, solid tackle, taking him straight to the ground. That's more of my size, 150 pounds. I'm 5'10", and maybe a little lighter than him, but that was a great open field tackle after the catch. Oh, well, that's what they, they, they teach you. You know, use the shoulder, take it straight to the ribs, and take him straight to the ground. Third and 13, back at the 32-yard line. Copel throws it, almost picked off. Over the middle, the middle linebacker. That is number 15, Torres Smith, getting a hand, knocking that ball away. So it's going to be fourth down. Kicker comes out for West Osha. Not the opening series you wanted if you're the head coach. High snap. What a catch. And getting the kickoff. Great job. Just getting it and a good bounce. That ball's going to go across the 30 down to about the 27 yard line. And if he doesn't play basketball, he should because he went up for the rebound, able to come down and still have the sense of mind, the, the presence to get a foot on it on a good kick on a terrible night. 9.28 left to play, third quarter, 28-7, Lake Geneva. Line. Doyle, under center, one to the near. Doyle's going to keep it, doesn't go anywhere. Good job with the offense, uh, the defensive line. So Taylor, the tank, playing Iron Man football. Both sides, he made the stop. Doyle. And nowhere. Hands it off. And that is to Lake Geneva, number 32, not instead. We're going to call that a gain of one. It's going to be third and six at their own 31-yard line. And for Westosha, if you can get a three and out here, get the ball back. That's a big deal. And try a build off right. of it. Exactly. Doyle, he's going to keep it. Good job on the stop by the West Osha defense. Number five on West Osha with first contact. That's Krantz. A rare three and out for Lake Geneva. So they're going to call it fourth and a, a short four. Waiting for the snap. Oh, st it's going to be a direct snap. Enough for a first down. Fumble. Who has the ball? West Osha says it's them, but we're going to wait and see for the, and they're going to say Lake Geneva ball. Why did I think it would be anything different than J.P. Doyle with the trickery in the backfield? He's been the man all game long. Direct snap. Caught West Osha, and then the ball came out, and West Osha was absolutely positive. They came up with it, and the referee said no. First down, Lake Geneva at their own 41-yard line, up 28-7, and there's a, there's a flag. This time I think the Falcons jumped. We'll wait and see. It's going to be against West Osha. 
That's going to be their fourth of the evening. So it's going to be fourth, uh, first and five at the 46-yard line. Hand it off. Bouncing through. Nice job moving up. As they were able to get all the way to midfield, just short, the tip of the football touching midfield. And we're glad to hear James Taylor, his the the grandson tank the the, the Taylor the tank. No kidding. So welcome, James, down in Florida. That's a nice thing. We're glad you're able to join us. Lake Geneva comes up. Comes to, to the line. Second and one. Doyle pitches it out, and the runner lost his footing. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of people slide tonight. No. So with how wet the field is, that tells you just how... The, the drainage and how good the conditions are on the field. If you look at the field in general, it's perfect. Well, and knock on wood, too, we haven't seen, we've seen just the one injury, and it wasn't anybody being carted out the field. It was maybe five, ten seconds, get back to your feet. Right. And it's been, other than that, it's been pretty clean. Doyle, under center. Handed it off, yeah, and they, it's We're gonna wait day. and see. We had we have enough we have enough flags on the field right now to fill a Kleenex box. So uh, we're gonna see exactly what they saw. There was a mix-up in the backfield. Well, there was an issue. That's a motion. So it's gonna cost Badger five. They're going to decline it. So it's going to be third and one again. Again, I would. Okay. Oh, it is going to be fourth down. I thought they blew the whistle prior to saying that the play actually took place. If now what's happening here? Now they're moving the ball. Yeah, back. they accepted it. That's what I thought they were going to do, and when they didn't do it, I'm like, okay. I mean, so now it's gonna be third and six. I can see the steam coming from your ears, there, Bob. <laughs> They were going to not accept the penalty. Right. Doyle, what a catch and a fumble. Balls out. West Ocean recovers. I think the hit at the end is what forced the ball out there, Bob. What a hit. That was a one-handed catch. Incredible catch by number one Richardson. And then he took a big hit, and that ball went flopping. From one great play to the next. Next. And a huge turnover. West Osha takes the ball at their own 35-yard line, first and 10. And I was talking about uh, a bow defense. They're going to hit you until you drop the ball. That's the way he played. That's the way he, what he expects out of his kids. On the pitch. Nowhere. Big hit. What a job driving forward second and third effort. And that's the tank. 
Well, he was in the backfield for a loss, and then I think he picked up he two got yards. Al- well, he got almost back to the line of yeah, scrimmage. Yeah, he didn't pick up any yards. But the idea that he, he was hit four and five yards back, that was nothing but sure will and good defense out of Lake Geneva. But the tank just rolled. Capel out of the gun. He's going to keep it, oh. and that. Now we're seeing a few uh, where the legs come out from under him, and you wonder if if they're going to need to change the cleats, how long they can make them. Well, it's later in the night, and the, there's more divots out there than when they started. But if you look, it's that field is just in beautiful, beautiful condition. We were talking prior to the game to the head of the ground crew, and they should be proud of it. And this is one of the nicest fields that we've seen all year, and you're not going to get better. Capel, out of the gun. Moving up and caught. Great concentration. And that's another big catch by number six, Meininger. Meininger doing a nice job going up and grabbing that ball, pulling it down, almost picked off again. But you saw Capel's arm right there. No doubt. That, that was a fastball. That was a fastball. And a fingertip by the defense. And Meininger doing a great job of just keeping his composure and his concentration on the football. First and 10 at their own 49-yard line. West Osha with the ball down by 21. 28-7. Coming back on the turnover. Nowhere. Taylor on the carry. Gets back to the line of scrimmage at the 49-yard line. There aren't many objects that can stop a tank. And now the other referees come back in and move the ball back at about a yard and a half. So it's going to be a loss of one. It's going to be second and 11 at the 48-yard line, their own 48 for West Osha. And you can see he was disappointed. Taylor saw some green and got tripped up just before he was able to hit his stride. Back now out to just short of midfield. It's going to be third and a long nine. I cannot tell you how important that is. Well, there's definitely some tired legs out there. As we are just cruising right through this third quarter. 2.09 left to play. 28-7, 28-7, Lake Geneva. Capel comes up, and down he goes. Nice job as that, it, it, you saw the pocket start to collapse. Capel tried to run up into the pocket, breaking free, and instead a big arm grabbed him, taking him to the ground. And that arm grab is the junior, number 55, Yandel Flores. Did not allow him to get out. He just kind of bear-hugged him and brought him down. So it's going to be fourth and 14 as the kicking unit comes out for West Osha. Good kick. So they've had two turnovers, but West Osha not able to take advantage of them as knocked out of bounds, crossing the 35-yard line. Good, solid return, giving good field position for Lake Geneva at about the 38-yard line. 113, left to play, as you can see, 28-7, Lake Geneva. WGTD Sports. By the way, a huge thank you as we have uh, our producer director, Scott Nelson, and tonight our camera operator, Keegan Schultz, he's actually in the in the rain. So we thank thank him very much for doing that. Falling forward. 
see what they give him, where they mark it. They're going to mark that ball at about the 37-yard line. Gain of three. Under a minute left in the third. You're right, Matt. The first and second quarter took forever. This just absolutely motored by on the third quarter. If we take away the first quarter, we have ourselves a game. Coming across. And a fumble. I think they're going to call the play dead. We're waiting to see. The referees are talking. When did the ball come loose? And they're going to call it West Osha ball. So now the third turnover. Capel. Out of the gun. And a good job by Lake Geneva, number five, Clawson. Clawson, number five, stuck him in the backfield. And that's the end of three here in Lake Geneva with the score, Lake Geneva Badgers 28, West Osha 7. Going into the fourth quarter, West Osha with the ball on the turnover. 28-7. They're looking to be able to make something happen. They need to do it early. This team has the ability to score points, but they have terrible weather. Waiting? Nowhere. Well, that ball slipped out of Capel's grasp, right off the fingertips. And we want to give a shout out to uh, Ms. Walker. I guess her son used to play for Lake Geneva. He's a coach now, and she's watching us from Florida as well. So we've got a lot of celebrities. There we go tonight. Think about us when it's minus twenty and it's snowing. Would you please? So here we go. Out of the gun, Capel. We have motion. He's going to keep it. Crosses over, didn't fool anybody. Falls across the 40 to the 41-yard line. So it's going to be 4th and 20 back at their own 41-yard line. They're going to go for it. Two to the far. Nobody to the near. Capel. 
Lake Geneva's going, just going to pin their ears back and go after him. And here they come. He Yo. took a big hit, and it's intercepted. Or dropped. I thought he came away with the ball, and it wound up being knocked away. And that happened from the big hit. Capel just taking a pounding as he let that ball go. And I think the Argonists say that the, the interception was made. So they said his knee was down. So uh, Could not advance the football after making the catch. So Carrie Kruchek, her son is playing for West Osha Youth. Good for them. Way to go. And we're cheering them on. You go for the West Osha Youth team. That's terrific. Handing it off on the pitch. Nice move, and that's a flag. That flag's way back as number one Richardson was able to get all the way to the near side and turn the corner, but that's normally in the area of holding. We're going to wait and see where they call it, but Lake Geneva's walking backwards. Yeah. Chris Miller bringing up that it, it would have been actually better to let it go on downs, and he's right. But that adrenaline rush to actually knock it and not take the INT, that's a pretty tough thing to do. Because your instinct says catch the ball and run with that. That's right. That's exactly. So here we go. The ball is back to the 36-yard line. 28-7, Lake Geneva. Ten minutes left to play. In the moment, you're trying to make a play. Yeah. But in the long run... He's, he was right. In the long run, you, you, your mind says one thing, but your body instinct says another. Hands it off. No, he, can't, he kept it. Doyle crossing the 35. You know, the physical part of, of any sport is, is tough, but the mental side of sports, much more difficult. Trying to keep your head on straight. Trying to focus about everything at the yep. same time. And have your body work. Doyle. Under center. One to the far. Everybody else in the box. Motion. Doyle keeps it. He's going to pitch. And not a lot. That is to Matthew O'Grady. Watch this kid. I know you don't see a lot of him right now. He's just a sophomore. I'm telling you, by the time he's a senior, we're all going to be talking about him. He is going to be all everything in the state of Wisconsin. Well, a couple of weeks ago, we had the opportunity to see him. I think they were playing against Bradford or Tremper, one of the two. And we saw Matthew O'Grady on the offense, on the defense. He was kicking. He was returning. He was doing just about everything. He sold hot popcorn at halftime. He did. It was too hot. I wanted to complain. It was too hot. 41-yard line, third and 10, 28-7 Badgers, taking time off the clock, eight and a half left to play. Timeout, Lake Geneva, 8.25 left to play, 28-7, we'll be right back. Here at Pet Supplies Plus in Kenosha, we have everything you need to keep your pets happy, healthy, and thriving. Pet Supplies Plus in Kenosha. Come visit your favorite neighborhood pet store, now open at 3755 80th Street. We have all you need to keep your pets happy. Get your dog groomed at our full service salon or keep your own bathroom clean by using our self-pet wash. See you soon, neighbor. See you soon, neighbor. Coming out of the timeout, and Matt and I were talking, you know, three turnovers for West Osha, and they weren't able to convert any of the three in the, in the points. If they were able to convert that,
the way Lake Geneva, two for two from Lake Geneva, we have a tie game at 28. Well, and West Tosha has, it's been difficult on that offense, yeah. especially for Capel. He's been, yeah, he's they've been, been scrambling in like crazy. Incomplete. As it's going to be fourth and ten, and Lake Geneva is going to kick away. But that's a credit to Lake Geneva. The defense. Yes. Oh, I agree 100%. You know, offense is important, but defense wins championships. It does. They say that defensive-minded coaches win championships. I, I think they do, and I think defense in general wins a championship. You know, you keep the—a good defense leaves the offense on the field because you get th third, uh, three and out, three and out, three and out, and you just give more opportunities for your offense to be, uh, to be successful. 28-7, 8-13 left to play, but I know you can read. That's what I get for not looking at the <laughs> screen, right? <laughs> I tell you. Here we go. West Osha with the ball at their own 41-yard line, first and 10. Capel, out of the backfield. Good run. Look at the run. Oh, Look at the no. fire. And the ball's out. Did the ball come out? Taylor, the tank, rumbles all the way to the 44-yard line. Did they get it back or did the Badgers? They, but he came. Oh, the ball did come out. Oh, my goodness. I thought originally it came out, and then I thought he grabbed it again. On the third and fourth effort for Taylor, yeah. it was it was Able jarred to be, out. You know, And we talk about that. At what time do you go down and you live to fight another day? But in this case, I give Taylor credit because only by moving the ball in this situation do you have any hope to be able to do anything. In the moment, that's what you that's want right. to do is get as many yards as possible. That's right. Another fumble as now the weather really is making it get a little sloppy out there. Doyle recovered his own fumble. They're going to give him a gain of maybe one, maybe a foot. Well, if Doyle had fumbled that ball and the Falcons recovered, I would have said, this is a do-over. Taylor, right. you're forgiven. But it's not Taylor's fault. The weather has played a huge part in tonight's game. That's football. They, both sides have played. Both sides have turned the ball over. Doyle hands it off. Nice run by O'Grady. It looked like he was going to be taken behind the line of scrimmage. He was able to fight him off. And again, that's the monsoon that they have been playing in all night. Hey, and give our cameraman... Give him credit. Keegan, great job. And here we go. And a big hit. And that's what they need. And that is number 42 from West Osha. Where's Becky? On the hit. That's a loss. It's going to be fourth now and eight. As the kicker is going to come out, and that should be O'Grady. So you always have to worry with him. He can throw the ball. He can run with the ball. And if you're going to get into a foot race with O'Grady, you're going to lose. Yes, you are most of the time. And we've seen it firsthand. Direct snap. Across. First down. 40. 40 35. 30. And out of bounds. Doyle on the direct snap. And they wanted to put an exclamation mark on that one, taking the ball down to the 20-yard line. Well, finally an explosive play. We feel like we haven't had some excitement like this since the first quarter. But good job by J.P. Doyle. He fought off a couple of arm tackles. He did. Absolutely, Matt. 
The ball's going to be placed on the 22-yard line, first and 10, Lake Geneva. 540 left to play. 28-7, Lake Geneva. Going across. He's going to take that all the way to about the 20-yard line. Oh, and now a little chippiness as there's some discussion going on. I always love when the little guy gets into the middle of the fight and, and the... Uh, the, the lineman just pick, picks him up and turns him around. It reminds me of Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo. Let, Let, Let me at him. Let me at him. That's it. Napoleonic syndrome. Not that I'd know anything about that. <laughs> Same with dogs, though. Big bark. That's it. Small dog. But don't tell him that. And they're just moving the ball forward. And why wouldn't you? Big number 77, that's Skipper, Richard Skipper. 6'1", 295 pounds. That's who they're running behind. I'm going to skip trying to tackle that guy. Yeah. Third and less than a yard. So Badgers taking their time. Taking the time off the clock, up by three scores, 28-7 if you're just joining us. It has been Lake Geneva. It has been a wet, nasty night. Fumble, and I believe West Osha. West Osha. And that is the fourth turnover for Lake Geneva tonight. Where's Becky on the recovery? For West Osha. Well, the difference between these two teams is, so the four turnovers by Lake Geneva, at Zero. least two of them have been converted into points. Right. Well, the, both of them for Lake Geneva, zero points from West Osha on turnovers. That is the difference in the game. Funny how that all adds up. And it usually is the team that turns over the ball most loses. Well, but, you know, if you've got a defense the way Lake Geneva has to be able to fall back on, that wins games. I mean, there's no doubt about it. That's going to be a gain of two, second and eight from their own 14. Capel. Looking. He's going to flip it out. And falling forward, that was a little shuttle. Is that Taylor? That is, that's Taylor. You called it. The tank. That's who I, you know, I, I know that you're not running right now. I'd find ways to get him more involved if that's possible. He is a very special player. Badger's defense has done a great job of swallowing him up. Not give yes. him any running lanes. That's exactly. Throws it over the middle. A catch and 15 yards on the slide. But they're going to mark that ball. And that's Richardson, I believe, right? Number six? No, Menninger. I'm sorry. That's Menninger. Menninger on the catch. Nice job laying out. And he's been a crucial part of this offense tonight. He has. Capel. Over to the tank, nowhere. They are keying on him. Taylor, as he had that one 80-yard run, and since then, little bits and pieces here and there. He's been quiet. Looks like there's coming up on two minutes to go in the game, Bob. Remember, no two-minute warning in high school ball. Capel. He's wrapped up and goes down. Well, in a game like this, when it's most likely out of reach at this point, you just want to make sure that your star quarterback doesn't get, get hurt. hurt. 
but yet you can't ask them to pull back because the person, the time that they take it easy is the time they will get hurt. Right. So either have them play or take them out. But there is not sitting on the fence. Capel loses his footwork, comes past, gets that first down, but stays in bounds. I think I would have gone out of bounds there, but the ball at the 45 yard line on the first down. That's not taking it easy. That's saying there's no quit in this quarterback. First and 10. Well, and that's what you want. Under a minute yet to play. Westosha comes to the line. Comes up across, takes a slide. Did he get out of bounds? They're going to say that he did not make the first down. And he also didn't get out of bounds. And he didn't get out of bounds. That's not, that's 0 for 2. And that very well may be the last game of the evening. Second, uh, they're going to try to get one more. They might have a chance for two if they call timeout. Westosha with all three, but I think they're going to take one snap. Go deep. Out of bounds. Almost. And that is it. And that goes to number 11. For West Osha. And that's the end of it. We have a final here. Lake Geneva victorious over West Osha. 28 7. Matt, you look and you say, really, everything happened in the, the first five minutes of this game. Maybe the first two minutes of the game. Right. But for West Osha, you didn't give up any points in the second half. Yes, the weather was a factor. For Lake Geneva and their head coach, Matt Hensler, so he's going to scrutinize the four turnovers that they had tonight, right. but I think he's going to credit his defense for not allowing the, the for West Osha to put the points on the board. Yeah, but That's if, big. But if I'm the coach, I'm going to look and say you lost this game. Four turnovers, 35, that, that's 28 points. They had seven. Otherwise, you lost this game 35-28. They just, they didn't do it to finish it. You know, that's what happens. So 28-7, Lake Geneva victorious. If you didn't enjoy the game, I hope that you at least enjoyed the broadcast. For everybody in Lake Geneva, a very happy and safe homecoming for Matt Schwantz. I'm Bob Haggerty. Have a great night, everybody.